since the theme tonight is film, I will mention right off that film is a hot medium as compared to TV. Uh, and uh, therefore, it has uh, much less power to involve the whole man than, than TV, or involve in the sense of drag people into its uh, parlor, as it were. But James Joyce devotes parts of the Finnegan's Wake to film and TV, and uh, he explains his approach to film is in the section called The Aunt and the Grace Hopper. The Aunt is a motor car, and the Grace Hopper is an airplane. And the Aunt is the film, and the Grace Hopper is TV. Now, I'll, I'll just mention why he, they happen to pop up in that illustrative role. Joyce, I think, quite correctly saw that the motor car is very much like a movie camera, with the driver really in charge of screen and a camera alike, and having a moving picture uh, on his own. The, the driver of a motor car is by way of being a movie unit. Now, this isn't true of airplane. But the uh, motor car extends the feet of man. The driver of a motor car is a kind of paraplegic, very much like uh, someone seated in a movie theater looking at the great screen, the great environment outdoors. And uh, the movie is an extension of the human eyes, uh, the eyes extended pr prodigiously by means of the feet. Actually, in biologically or physiologically, the um, eyes are on a platform provided by the feet. The feet, I mean, the physiologists put it somewhat, somewhat in those terms, that man's eyes are provided with a mobile moving platform of feet. And um, the uh, fish are in a somewhat different position with regard to the use of the eye. But the movie, as an extension of feet and eye, is very different from TV, which is really an extension of the whole body. And the TV camera is much more an extension of the hand than it is of the feet or the eyes. The TV scanning finger uh, actively moves through and over objects. And uh, the TV uh, camera has really very few characteristics in common with the movie camera. It has no shutter. It doesn't take pictures. And uh, it handles its, the human environment. Moreover, the TV viewer is the screen, not the camera. The movie viewer is camera, his eyes go out at the world. The movie viewer looks at the world, which is enormously extended, enlarged, and made available to him. The TV cam uh, view viewer does not look at the world, it looks at him. He is the screen. The TV view the, uh, I'm, I'm saying, of course, that between the movie and the TV form, there is a profound antithesis a profound opposition. And whereas the, t the TV viewer is the screen with the image coming at him in Joyce's phrase, which he uses throughout the whole of Innigan's Wake, the TV viewer receives the charge of the light brigade. He is the valley of death, as it were. <laughs> and um, the TV tube is a charge of light particles that literally and physically move at the audience and cover you. Those little dots on the screen move onto you. Those little uh, particles of light invest the viewer and wrap around him. The TV viewer, uh, TV viewer is wrapped up in the space of the TV image which goes around him. And the in becoming the environment, instead of being detached as the movie viewer is and looking at an environment, in becoming an environment, the TV viewer, and this is true of all our youngsters since TV, feels profoundly part of the world. This amazing sophistication and sense of belonging to the world and feeling at home in all parts of the world, which is characteristic of those children for whom TV was a, an early experience, 
who had TV long before they learned to read and write. In my own family, there's a profound difference between the children who learn to read and write before TV and those who learn to read and write after TV. They have completely different habits of mind and, and social association. The uh, children who learn to read and write after TV are in a much more profound group, much more serious, grim if you like. The TV genera generation of youngsters is grim. They're not lighthearted, they're not playful, they're not detached. They have none of the fantasy of the old movie world or the old book world about them. They're deeply involved. They take everything very seriously. <clears throat> and, um, well, a lot, including a lot of things that would be better to be handled more playfully. I'm not trying to make value judgments here. I'm not trying to say that uh, the TV is good or bad or that movie is good or bad. I'm just trying to make a distinction between their mode of operation. And Joyce has this fascinating section. It's uh, in the Thunder number nine of Finnegan's Wake that he deals with the Ont and the Grace Hopper. Then in Thunder number 10 on page 424, he goes straight over to TV and deals with the TV world as such. It's the last thunder in the book. The thunders, by the way, in Finnegan's Wake are moments of huge technological innovation and impact on society. The thunder is the rumble of social change response to new technology in the whole human society. The uh, thunder is simply the uh, kind of world applause or response uh, to novelty and innovation. And there are 10 of these thunders, each one of which is very carefully worked out in terms of things like motor cars and telegraphs and television and movies. Now, the TV as plane is much more, you see, the, the, an airplane is not the extension of the feet or the hands, it's an extension of the entire body simultaneously. And that's why it brings it very much closer to TV than, than it does to movie. The, um, all technologies, whatever, are extensions of our own physiology and our own sensory life. Naturally, when you extend these forms into the environment and make environments out of them, it has a profound effect on the rest of, the rest of our makeup. <clears throat> 